I'm just curious how having the disease affects your social life. Well, uh, for example, I've... I'm wondering if there are people who are afraid, you know, when they find out mm -hmm. that you have this disease, if they don't want to be around you. Well, I, I, I have to say, you know, I've been pretty lucky with my friends. You know, the, the ones who have been uh, th there for me from the get-go, you know. Mm -hmm. They are just, uh, I don't know what I did in a past life <laughs> to, to serve such good friends, but I, you know, I've got a, some great people in my life. And every year they help me I, I put on a fundraiser, which I, I do, and it's usually in the month of June out at McNears Beach Park in Santa Fe. And you play guitar, electric guitar, and you have a band? I, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's part of the fundraiser. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I get to have my band play. Uh, and it's yeah, it's just a fun day. And I look out there, and there's like all these people, and it's like, yeah, they're there for me. And, you know, it's, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it makes me feel really good. Yeah. So. So, uh, so as far as that goes, uh, I haven't really had any any problems with any friends, you know, just mm -hmm. you know, not wanting to be around me. So, what's it like um, for people with Huntington's uh, being out in the world? You know, once you start getting the the chorea, the, the these uncontrollable physical movements of your limbs. Well, it's very difficult because you know people always are always staring at you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know, and the thing is, a lot of people don't have empathy for people. You know, they think they know what's wrong with them, but you know, they, if they see someone uncoordinated, they assume the person's drunk. Or exactly. Drunk. Yeah, I mean, literally, you know, no one knows about it. I mean, I've run into doctors who don't know who don't know about it. Yeah. One doctor told me I couldn't have Huntington's disease. And I said, "Why's that?" And she was like, "Well, only women get that." Wow. And I was like. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not true at all. Yeah. So in her defense, though, she was very receptive and to what I had to say about it and understood and basically was wanting to be educated. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, you know, she just blew me off when I said that. This is probably why people should go to an academic medical center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like UCSF in San Francisco or Stanford or places all over the country. but. Uh, an academic medical center would have the doctors who, who would have seen this disease yeah. and really know about the disease. Very true. Yeah, I, I think that it's invaluable to, for me anyway, to be in the Bay Area and be so close to UCSF yeah. Yeah. because I know that they're you know they're one of the top notch universities, well, especially in neurology. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. correct. You know, one thing I wonder about is. Like well, for someone like you who's doing everything right, what's the course of the disease? Well, here's the thing. Basically, um, people people live generally anywhere from 10 to 25 years with the disease. Uh, you start losing control of all of your muscles, though. You know, you, you get to a point where you know you are no longer able to you know take care of yourself. Um, just try, you know, just imagine yourself trying to talk. And your tongue is moving all over. Yeah. Uh, imagine yourself just wanting to make a sandwich. Right. And you can't make a sandwich because you know, right. you're just you know your whole you know just your your everyday you know functions you know you can't do anymore. And that's similar to some other diseases mm -hmm. uh, like ALS mm -hmm. and uh, Michael J. Fox uh, with uh, Parkinson's mm -hmm. disease mm -hmm. has shown the world on camera how difficult it is for him. To, I, he described uh, uh, what it's like for him brushing his teeth. Because I have to put the brush down on the countertop, hold it flat, and get the bristles on. Because if I hold it, I'm, I'll miss it. It's a moving target. I was sent a picture of a Mayan temple with hundreds of steps leading up to the sky. I imagine myself climbing up them towards recovery. And now, thanks to extraordinary breakthroughs by researchers, a cure is in sight, but it can't be done without your help. You made an arithmetic mistake on page two. <laughs> it was quite a boner. <laughs> no, no, but th 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 that can't be right. I, I don't make arithmetic mistakes. 
Are you saying I do? Oh, no. No, no, of course not. It's just, I was thinking, oh, gosh, golly, I made a boo-boo. And I gave it to Stephen Hawking. Great. Another fainter. <laughs> it's very comical. Right. Um, although very sad. Right, right. But no, I think it was a great way for him to describe that. Yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a, a hero of mine, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a hero of mine, as is uh, what was Christopher Reeve. Mm -hmm. And uh, as are you. I mean, people who, who decide not to let the disease just victimize them, but to decide to pursue mastery and well-being mm -hmm. despite the disease. I try to be the best, the best role model that I can be. Uh, I am human. You know, I definitely don't have, I have my bad days as well. You know, I just try to make sure that I am, I, get, you know, I just want to, I just want to be able to, to be as happy as I can be. You know, I think, and you know, I have, I have times where I'm not happy. Well, I mean, the word happy is often misinterpreted as just kind of happy-go-lucky. But when you say happy, you mean, I imagine you mean happy in your life. Yes. Like satisfied with your life. Right. Yes. Correct. Uh, and finding meaning and purpose. Correct. What, where does Huntington stand right now in terms of finding a cure, finding a treatment for at least to control the symptoms? Well, what they have now is called uh, tetrabenazine, and that's available for movements. So people who have you know movements that are ex you know more exaggerated, uh, you can kind of control that. So it doesn't stop the disease. It doesn't cure the disease. No. But it but it can control the movements. Right. Right. The physical uh, involuntary movements. Right. Right. Called Korea. Um, up in the University of Vancouver, they had actually uh, cured uh, Huntington's in mice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, you know, that was about five years ago, I guess. But, you know, I haven't heard anything about that since as far as Have going into... Have there been at least stage one trials with that drug? Well, see, that's the thing, though. It's like you, know, you haven't heard anything about it since. Mm. So So do you think it's because maybe they cured the Huntington's, but the mice died from something else? No idea. Yeah. I, I guess I've... I, I have to have hope, okay? But... Yeah, you know, I've been hearing, you know, oh, five years. Five, I've been hearing five years for probably 15 years. Yeah, you know, oh, it was five years I had something. So, mm -hmm. so for me, you know, it's just like I, I don't really. I mean, I have to have hope, but but it's frustrating. I don't when live. You keep hearing five years. Right. Five years go by and nothing happens. I don't live five on planet years hope. Go by and nothing happens. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. So how do you deal with that? The fact that. You know, there are all these people trying to give you hope. There's a study being done. Mm -hmm. They've cured mice of Huntington's, and then you see that nothing is happening with human trials. It's frustrating, you know. Uh, at the same time, you know, it's just like I go, well, it's... I, I, I'm basically doing all that I can do, you know, to, to help bring awareness to it. Mm -hmm. um, so so I, I, I know that I'm at least doing my part, you know, I, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm sure Huntington's isn't the only disease out there that people have been could say the same thing. Yeah, oh, we, sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's just it's a frustrating thing. Um, I'm basically at a point right now where, yeah, you know, I I think I'm just, uh, you know, I I think I'm just at at the point where I just realize that yeah, you know, nothing probably will, you know, cure this disease in my lifetime. Are there anomalies, you know, like in ALS, we have Stephen Hawking, the theoretical physicist, right, right. who's been living with uh, ALS now for close to 50 years. Right, he's amazing. And supposedly guy. it kills people in a few years. Mm -hmm. Have you s discovered anyone with Huntington's who's uh, broken the mold? And No, no. Mm -hmm. I would like to, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying that that person's not out there, yeah. But I haven't met that person, so... You said you were okay with getting the disease. I mean, how, how did you get to that point of being okay with well, getting the disease? It's been in my life for, you know, ever since I can remember, you know, 
Since I was five years old, you know, Huntington's has been there. So since you were five years old, yes, because my grand grandfather grandfather had it. Like I said earlier about being dealt this deck, you know, these were the hands I was dealt. You so were dealt a bad to, hand. Yeah, now I have to but play this. But you hand. have a choice in how you play the hand. Right. Correct. Correct. Like we're, yeah, like we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The way I'm choosing to play the hand is I'm yeah. trying to be positive about a it. A really skillful as well player. as well as. See, I'm I'm a bit of a realist, so it's like you know me me accepting that, you know, is is helpful. You know, it's like okay, I'm accepting of it. There's a form of therapy, psychotherapy, that is addressing this, I think, more than any other, and that's uh, it's called ACT, acceptance and commitment therapy, <laughs> and the focus in acceptance and commitment therapy is about using mindfulness to observe our behavior and to observe what do we want to stand for in life? What are our personal life values? And I see you doing this. It's so wonderful to see you modeling this for us. Thank you.